during the local government elections, like converting Clarkstown into a city and Portmore into Little Miami. <laughs> Mere pie in the sky ideas masquerading as a vision of national development. So, we taught you about fiscal responsibility on which the economic stability is built. Yes, the same tree of economic stability you are now shading under. We nurtured its early growth. We made sure there could be no turning back. We led the way on fiscal responsibility. Let me remind you, since you keep bringing it up, during the 2007 to 2011 period, the JLP government had abandoned the IMF program in a wanton act of fiscal irresponsibility, leaving Jamaica on the edge of a precipice and staring at disaster. When coming to office in 2012, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller leveraged her many years of hard earned political capital and laid it on the line. God, I got a rising legend. Represent for Talk Your Mind TV. If you love Talk Your Mind TV, bet me I rest a God, a God. Talk Your Mind TV, anything them say God here, and anything them do God say, before them even think at him, know what them think. I want to go on my diet to Jamaica and I want to deal with big up on yourself. My Jamaican will love Jamaican like I do. Big up on yourself. Well, my viewers and subscribers, another one here. I want to hear the next Prime Minister of Jamaica, the most right honorable Mark Golin, deliver at the national budget debate to them, my viewers and subscribers. I don't want to hear the things that I'm talking about. I don't want to hear the corruption that I'm calling out. My viewers and subscribers, tough time catching head till head side catch out. Nigel blinking eye till now, eye water and left in an eye. The Prime Minister shake him head till him neck swell up on him. Let one is fixing glass till he in glass get foggy. My viewers and subscribers, I want to know hear how the Prime Minister talk. We think me attack. Mark Golden, the new, the next Prime Minister of Jamaica, I talk about. And Jonas is the opposition leader. For all of who never did know, Andrew Wallace is the oppos op op opposition leader. Some want to listen how the future Prime Minister of Jamaica talk and call out Andrew Wallace and Nigel Clark and the whole of them corruption. I want hear this and make sure I want call on a grandfather, call on a grandmother because they talk about everything with the benefit of the whole of My viewers and subscribers, I just call everybody around the TV screen or everybody around the phone screen or everybody around the tablet screen. Come here, the next Prime Minister of Jamaica talk some things. I want to hear this. Today, I will remind Jamaicans of some of the context in which this budget for the coming fiscal year, 2024-25, has been crafted. I will then address some real challenges that we found in the budget as presented. And then I'm going to provide you with some of the concrete plans that we will implement when we come to service as government of Jamaica. I, know, I do this knowing that Jamaicans have seen the light. They know that we will be coming back to implement our plans. The people of Jamaica know that there's one thing about ideas. They are best implemented by the people who come up with them. It is time for change, and that is where we are going. We are on the road to change. Madam Speaker, I sat through the four and a half hour presentation of the Finance Minister and I am more convinced than ever that this government does not have any intention of tackling the fundamental challenges facing our country. With them, Jamaica will continue along its current path and the frustrations and hopelessness of the majority of our people will continue to grow. The 2024-25 budget is yet another tinkering budget not grounded in a vision of development for the Jamaican people. According to their economic model, something will trickle down to the farmer, the teacher, the nurse, the sanitation worker, the hairdresser, and the taxi man. After eight years, they want Jamaicans to wait even longer for the trickle that might come. Much of what was presented we have heard before. The six-story hospital at the University of the West Indies was first announced in 2015 by Fenton Ferguson. The Minister of Finance seems to have found the plan in 2020 
and it was re-announced. The Jam World and Fort Rocky Entertainment pro, pro, um, Zone projects have been announced and re-announced several times. Yes. In fact, Fort Rocky was named Jamaica's first entertainment zone in October 2017. Yes. The customs duty changes on, yes. on imports yes. were announced on another stage last November. And new garbage trucks and buses were announced in 2020 to much fanfare and ribbon cutting. Meanwhile, Jamaicans are crying that times are too hard, the cost of living is too high, their wages are too low. Young people are crying out for opportunities to further their education and for better job options. Citizens are crying no to corruption and deception and yes to transparency and truth. And in terms of broken promises and deception, who can forget the 5% growth in four years? An impeachment bill in the first 100 days after 2016? The fixed election dates that were never delivered? And Jamaica's greatest wish, sleeping with our windows and doors open. And there are a few new ones, Madam Speaker, that emerged during the local government elections, like converting Clarkstown into a city and Portmore into Little Miami. <laughs> Mayor pie in the sky ideas masquerading as a vision of national development. We live in a country, Madam Speaker, where there is increasing doubt in the impartiality of our institutions, increasing reports of fear of victimization by Jamaicans not aligned to the government, entrenched apathy with Jamaican nationals losing hope, who feel there's no recourse, no justice, and no point in participating in the political systems or exercising their franchise. Clouds of uncertainty and concern regarding the rights and freedoms of Jamaican citizens on a range of issues from beach access right through to states of emergency. An absence of accountability for wrongdoers aligned to the government. The militarization of the constabulary. All of this is the manifestation of a tendency towards our autocratic rule that I've spoken about year after year, right here in this budget presentation. So, I wonder if I hear what Mark Golden said, my viewers and subscribers. So, all of who are going like Mark Golden and do not work, a whole heap man do behind the scene for you, know, and for we. A whole heap man do behind the scene for we, public and behind the scene. So, I don't know if you stop, get blindfolded by the 5,000 and the 10,000 when I get from the labor right them and face reality. I could hear some more of the future Prime Minister. That is the untenable foundation upon which the country is being run. The main idea of this budget exercise and claim ownership of, that was a seed that was sown and nurtured by the People's National Party while in government. after the utter chaos, the utter chaos brought about by the JLP administration of 2007 to 2011. Let me remind you, since you keep bringing it up, during the 2007 to 2011 period, the JLP government had abandoned the IMF program in a wanton act of fiscal irresponsibility, leaving Jamaica on the edge of a precipice and staring at disaster. When coming to office in 2012, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller leveraged her many years of hard earned political capital and laid it on the line to lobby the international financial community to give Jamaica another chance. This was only possible because of the sacrifices of the Jamaican people who were willing to walk the walk because they trusted her not to sell them out. That is what saved our country from the ruin that the previous government had brought us to. We pulled the country out of the mire of fiscal irresponsibility. With Dr. Peter Phillips as finance minister and Portia Simpson Miller as prime minister, 
The PNP administration of 2012 to 2016 steadfastly prepared the ground in which the tree of fiscal responsibility began to grow in Jamaica. We got the country's public finances back on track. We transformed the tax system. We implemented other critical structural reforms along the journey. Along the journey of getting our national debt under control. And in 2016, the JLP inherited that tree with its roots firmly already in place and already bearing the fruit of fiscal stability. This is the foundation of the 12 years of economic stability that Jamaica has benefited from up to today. So, we taught you about fiscal responsibility on which the economic stability is built. Modernized re revenue system and the other basic building blocks of economic stability. Yes, the same tree of economic stability you are now shading under. Yeah, yeah. We nurtured its early growth. Right, yeah. We made sure there could be no turning back. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We yes. led the way on fiscal responsibility. And you, you on the other side, then on this side, mocked us whilst we were planting and nurturing that tree of fiscal responsibility. All you do is pass IMF tests, you said over and over. Do you forget? So don't lecture us on fiscal responsibility and economic stability. No sanky, no saying so. We took the hard decisions and implemented them. You inherited a situation that we had fixed here in Jamaica. And you have spent eight years leveraging that hard work that we put in and the fiscal responsibility that we left. And that is the truth. We on this side have no plans to cut down the tree of fiscal, of fiscal responsibility. It is a tree that I helped to plant and nurture with the work I did in that time. But we also, Madam Speaker, we also recognize that 2024, we also recognize that 2024 is not 2012. And the challenges and priorities are now different. Economic stability is not sufficient to meet the needs and expectations of the Jamaican people. The people need Jamaica to shift gear to something much better than what is going on now. The people want to see real change. Jamaica now needs a government that can take the country on the road to change. You say you are leveraging stability for all the people. But I must ask you, which people? Yes. Workers who are reeling from the high prices no. that keep going up? Mm -hmm. Farmers no. who are struggling with so many challenges? Civil servants, teachers no. and doctors who feel disrespected? No. What are you saying and what people are feeling just don't match up? Who is really benefiting from the stability that you say you are leveraging? Uh -huh. If you look at the 24-25 budget, the picture becomes more clear. Madam Speaker, in his opening budget speech last Tuesday, the minister announced a giveaway of $20,000 for employees and self-employed persons earning up to $3 million who are in the formal tax system. And he gave it the fancy name, reverse tax credit. He said that the objective is to incentivize on-time filing and paying statutory deductions. However, that objective is really questionable because to qualify for this, he says that you will have to become fully compliant for the 2023 tax year already gone by March 31, 2024, and that deadline is less than a fortnight away. Therefore, as a practical matter, it is most unlikely that anyone who is not already tax compliant will get the benefit. Furthermore, it is wishful thinking that a single payment of $20,000 would induce anyone who is now outside the tax system to take steps to bring themselves into it and start paying taxes. And it applies to persons below the threshold. The truth is that this so-called reverse tax credit smells 
like a $20,000 giveaway for political advantage as we get ever closer to the next general election. So, my viewers and subscribers, I'm here with the next Prime Minister of Jamaica say, how oh, it sound to how oh, it look to no. It don't look like a some political leverage them want it for score. It don't look so to no. They might try to use them brain. And Andrew only say can not turn it up, but him can't turn it up. In fire bed, wet up. We have some more the next Prime Minister of Jamaica. There is also another angle to it. The minister said that for an employee to be entitled to receive this reverse tax credit, his or her employer must have been fully compliant in making the statutory filings and payments for statutory deductions and employer contributions for 2023 by March 2024. Now I must ask the question, is this fair? How is it fair to an employee to deny him or her this little benefit in the event that the employer is not compliant with statutory filings and payments of deductions? Many businesses are now reeling from the increase in interest rates and are facing cash flow difficulties. So many of those employers may be behind in filings and payments of statutory deductions and employer contributions. The employee should not be blamed or penalized for that. Minister, an employer paying under three million to an employee and the employee himself or herself should get this benefit whatever the tax status of the employer. In your e if you are on the system, you should get the benefit. In your estimate of $11.4 billion for this relief this year, you've assumed that 570,000 persons will be able to access it. So don't deny anyone the benefit on the grounds that their employer is delinquent. To do that would be simply unfair. Jamaica needs thoughtful governance. And that is why we are on the road to change. Mr. Speaker, during the recent local government election campaign, the Prime Minister promised that the income tax threshold would be increased in what he said would be 1.5, 2.0. Last September, I had called for an increase of the threshold to $3 million, the purpose being to restore the real value, in real terms, of the 1.5 million that was announced back in 2016 and to provide some buffer for future inflation. The fact is that since 2016, accumulated inflation in Jamaica is over 46% since 2016. And an increase is required to restore the real value of the threshold that was last reset back in 2016. After the Prime Minister's grand election pronouncement of 1.5, 2.0, Persons are understandably quite disappointed that the minister has announced an increase of the threshold to only 1.7 million. That's $200,000. What they expected to be 2.0 million ended up being 0 0.2 million. And that translates to a mere $4,166 per month in benefit in their take home pay. And Madam Speaker, I am told, I didn't check it myself, but you can check it if you like. That $4,166 can't even buy a bucket of KFC for a family looking to share and have community with family and friends. Madam Speaker, if the, spe if the Minister had as phase one of restoring the value of the 1.5, even increased the threshold to 2 million, that would give persons an additional in getting to $3 million as tax inflows continue to grow. The threshold can be adjusted again in the future, in phase two, and maybe even phase three, depending how long it takes. Yeah. So, Madam Speaker, Jamaica needs caring governance, yes. and that is why we are on the road to change. I want to say something more about taxes. The minister likes to make a song and dance about no new taxes imposed since the last go-round of $30 billion in new taxes, which was imposed in the first two years of the JLP government elected in 2016 to pay for the 1.5. Then, the promise had been at the time that it would pay for itself, but that wasn't so. They had to impose $30-plus billion of taxes to pay for it. 
However, it is important to recognize that the taxes being collected from the Jamaican people have increased dramatically under this government. Dramatically. Have a look at that table. And you will see, in fiscal year 2015-16, which was the last year of the last PNP administration, the tax collected was $411.8 billion, which was 24%, 24% of GDP. The above table, this table, shows how much more tax. No tax. This table shows how much more tax is being collected yes. under the current JLP administration. Yeah. Tax collected now has moved from 24% of GDP to 28% of GDP. A much bigger carving of the national pie is now being paid by the Jamaican people in tax under the JLP. Jamaicans are, much, are taxed much more under this JLP government. That's just a fact. And if you look over the four years, the four fiscal years, 21-22 through 24-25, Madam Speaker, and I want you to listen to this, tax collections have increased by $409 billion. That's the increase in taxes over four years. $419 billion of additional taxes have been collected from the Jamaican people over the last four the years. Members time for speaking course, has expired. Over the last four years, $419 billion of additional taxes have been taken from the Jamaican people. That is an increase of 66%, which is way more, in fact, more than double the accumulated inflation over those four years. Over those four years, 31% was the accumulated inflation. The tax has gone up by 66% tax collected. And looking at tax collection on a per capita basis, in other words, looking at tax collection from the perspective of each Jamaican, since this JLP government came to office, they have more than doubled the annual tax take from every man, woman, and child in Jamaica, increasing it by a massive $190,000 per person and it now totals $342,000 per person at the time of this current budget. They have more than double the taxes they're taking from the people. So, so much for this no new taxes, Sankey. It is irrelevant. No new tax types, but much, much more taxes. 28% of GDP in taxes relative to 24 back in 2015-16. And as the recent election shows, who feels it, knows it. <laughs> Madam Speaker, Jamaica really needs honest governance. And that is why we are on the road to change. Madam Speaker, the minister says he's going to take away the protection that our farmers, farmers have enjoyed by removing GCT from the importation of raw produce. He says that Jamaica is on the cusp of being blacklisted by the World Trade Organization, the WPT, WTO, if we continue to protect our farmers. Well, based on our research, the, the WTO does not blacklist or unilaterally punish member states for non-compliance. Instead, an aggrieved member state must first enter into consultations with a non-compliant member state to seek changes yeah. on the particular measure that they are complaining of, or to win concessions before requesting the establishment of a panel to settle this, the dispute. The panel will thereafter issue a report, which can subsequently be appealed before the WTO's appellate body. The minister really therefore needs to state whose bidding he's doing by removing this GCT that was in place to protect our farmers. In recent years, the tensions in US-China relations, the, the Russia-EU sanctions resulting from the war in Ukraine, and so on, have adversely affected the workings of the WTO. For some time now, the WTO has not had a functioning dispute settlement mechanism. 
since the U.S. decided not to appoint members to the appellate body. And furthermore, the recently concluded MC13 meeting of trade ministers in Abu Dhabi. A number of critical issues were left unresolved. Reforms in the dispute settlement mechanism and, and so on, including subsidies in agriculture and fisheries by developed nations and other long outstanding issues for the benefit of small and vulnerable economies like Jamaica. In this context, we must question why the minister finds it necessary why? to proceed down this path why? instead of entering into negotiations with whichever party is agreed. We don't know who it is, as provided for under the WTO rules. The minister was also vague on the scope of this announced measure. What exactly are the import, imported raw food items for which GCT will be removed? I note that under the GCT Act, third schedule, part one, paragraph six, $1,000 per person at the time of this current budget. They've more than doubled the taxes they're taking from the people. So, so much for this no new taxes, Sankey. It is irrelevant. No new tax types, but much, much more taxes. 28% of GDP in taxes relative to 24 back in 2015-16. And as the recent election shows, who feels it knows it. Madam Speaker, Jamaica really needs honest governance. And that is why we are on the road to change. Madam Speaker, the minister says he's going to take away the protection that our farmers, farmers have enjoyed by removing GCT from the importation of raw produce. He says that Jamaica is on the cusp of being blacklisted by the World Trade Organization, the WPT, WTO, if we continue to protect our farmers. Well, based on our research, the, the WTO does not blacklist or unilaterally punish member states for non-compliance. Instead, an aggrieved member state must first enter into consultations with a non-compliant member state to seek changes on the particular measure that they are complaining of or to win concessions before requesting the establishment of a panel to settle this, the dispute. The panel will thereafter issue a report, which can subsequently be appealed before the WTO's appellate body. The minister really therefore needs to state whose bidding he's doing by removing this GCT that was in place to protect our farmers. In recent years, the tensions in U.S.-China relations, the, the Russia-EU sanctions resulting from the war in Ukraine, and so on, have adversely affected the workings of the WTO. For some time now, the WTO has not had a functioning dispute settlement mechanism mm -hmm. since the U.S. decided not to appoint members to the appellate body. And furthermore, the recently concluded MC13 meeting of trade ministers in Abu Dhabi a number of critical issues were left unresolved. Reforms in the dispute settlement mechanism and, and so on, including subsidies in agriculture and fisheries by developed nations and other long outstanding issues for the benefit of small and vulnerable economies like Jamaica. In this context, we must question why the minister finds it necessary to proceed down this path instead of entering into negotiations with whichever party is agreed, we don't know who it is, as provided for under the WTO rules. The minister was also vague on the scope of this announced measure. What exactly are the import, imported raw food items for which GCT will be removed? I note that under the GCT Act, third schedule, part one, paragraph six, the category of raw food stuff is extremely wide and specifically includes fresh fruit, vegetables, ground provisions, legumes, onions, garlic, meat, which is a very wide category, poultry, and fish. The removal of this protection leaves our farmers very exposed to unfair competition from importers who have little risk. We know that the rich countries of the world, North America and Europe, provide massive subsidies 
to their agricultural sectors, distorting fair competition and giving food imports from those countries an advantage over our producers here in Jamaica. Over the past 15 years, food imports into Jamaica have seen a steady increase, reaching over 1.4 billion US dollars in 2022, according to Statin. In contrast, our agricultural exports lagged far behind at a mere 273 million US dollars in that year. And this is a trend and it underscores the vulnerability of local food production. Local farmers already contend with high overhead costs, including GCT and various inputs that they use, farm supplies, which producers in other countries do not face. Jamaican farmers have other disadvantages, including their small scale, relatively speaking, reliance on rainfall rather than irrigation systems for many farmers, and limited access to mechanization and financial resources. In 2022, loans allocated to farming operations amounted to a mere 146.3 million Jamaican dollars. That's all. The removal of GCT on imported foodstuff will worsen this imbalance between locally produced and imported foods. It is likely to adversely impact the sector and the livelihood of farmers while undermining rural communities who are the breadbasket of our country. Only last year, we saw how onion farmers in St. Thomas were hurt badly when import permits were granted to importers and flooded the market with foreign onions, leaving our farmers with produce that they could not sell last year. In removing the GCT on the imports of produce, nothing has been put in place to protect our farmers from the wave of imports of produce that will now come into the market without paying GCT. And there's a common theme here, Mr. Speaker. When I was in St. Elizabeth recently, the fishermen were complaining bitterly that they cannot sell their lobster because big players are supplying the market at low prices and squeezing them out. Their MP is the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, yet they are suffering. The government is letting them down badly, and it's a crying shame. Mr. Speaker, there's also the critical necessity for transparency in the allocation of these permits for imported foodstuff to ensure that there's proper consideration for local production capacity and to eliminate the possibility for nepotism, cronyism and other forms of corruption. And we all hear who the major importers are. Jamaica Agricultural Society, the JAS, was apparently not consulted before this measure was announced by the minister, which in itself is an egregious example of arrogant and uncaring government. We have to ask who benefits from this? Certainly not the farmers. So who? We have consulted with the farming community and a raft of measures have been developed that can mitigate against what could turn out to be a very serious and prejudicial action if the farmers of Jamaica are to get a fair deal. The ideas have been proposed simultaneously to remove GCT from farm input supplies. So, my viewers and subscribers, when I hear what the Prime Minister of Jamaica say, and in a finishing of my viewers and subscribers, could you believe that the big nose Prime Minister walk out of Parliament just because he don't want to answer the question and them? But Mark Golin, I put to him, are the information them with Mark Golden a leak? My viewers and so and Jonas and them girl need to come out of Jamaica and go. And Jonas and the shopkeeper need to come out of Jamaica. I'm telling you something, Jamaican people, well thinking Jamaican people. And Jonas right for them a 17 year old say the ambition of to become a politician. And in destiny is to be assassinated by one of many enemies we have. And you want to decide for Lego power. And he said, anything he might do for this election and postpone, we're going to take him out. 
by force, by force, whether, whether by voting or the whole Jamaica for come together and hold him by head and haul him out of Henry Morgan house and hold him by head and haul him out of the big house on the hill. If I that way, I forgot to forget him out of Jamaica, the whole Jamaica for come together now and get him out of Jamaica because Andrew Jonas and his wife mash up Jamaica government. Mash up the parliament and Joe Wallace and his wife make Jamaican parliament and government system look like rubbish. I will not have no respect for him. Kinda of no respect for we where I serve. Him is a public servant. And Jamaica for start making him feel like him a put him a move like him a too much king. A one king made him a talk about and a King Charles. And Joe is any king, I must say a King Kong. If a kingship you are looking a King Kong. This type of behavior you have, my brother. In not care you go no way. Because there is no way upon earth you would think you can call one election in Jamaica and t for p It's not possible. A gorilla warfare don't that. Everybody, hey, everybody decide Andrew Wallace, every, every Jamaican, they put an MP and Q and I watch your next move. You know? I say every Jamaican, they put an MP and Q and I watch your next move. You walk out of parliament. The next Prime Minister of Jamaica will finish in speech outside of the parliament. Are you sick? Hey, you know, go hold Andrew Wallace and his wife and get them going to a mental institution because they're sick in their head. Andrew Wallace and his wife sick in their head. And we can't afford to make this madman around Jamaica to wreck. We cannot afford to let this madman, this mentally sick, this mentally challenged person fear mash up Jamaica. Who want on Jamaica in a, in a, in a, in a, in a family affair? In a, hey, well thinking Jamaica, who don't see what happened in a parliament? Who don't see what happened in a This not sh- all right. What is that telling us? Hey? The general election no more call. Because then go to instigate war and riot. If you postpone the election, my viewers and subscribers, thou said the Lord, Andrew Wallace, your name must have to go down. Andrew Wallace, your name must have to go down. By the hey, you don't know my motto, you know, a God and good road. I will clean up Jamaica and get out parasite like Andrew Wallace out of Jamaica. Andrew Wallace is a parasite, you don't see that? Andrew Wallace and his wife are parasite. Just a live for the Jamaican them people, you don't see them a parasite. We don't need to forget all these parasites out of Jamaica. Well thinking Jamaican. Love God and live here, man. God and good road. Hey, look out for part two. Look out for part two. Come heated. Talk to my TV. What you mean? The artist news, artist review, and the baddest TV channel right across the world globe. Watch this the man. Talk to my TV. Watch the man. They're at top TikTok. Talk to my TV. They're at top Facebook. Talk to my TV. They're at top Instagram. Talk to my TV. At top YouTube. Talk to my TV. All over the globe. Family love. Talk to my TV. Let me raise the God of God. Don't subscribe to Talk to my TV and say God of God. Don't press the like button for Talk to my TV and say God of God. I Say God upon them. I want to start share and like. Talk to my TV. You over there, please subscribe. Yeah, you pretty pretty. Yeah, may I please? May I beg you subscribe? Yes, and you in other city. Yeah, we are beg you like. Yeah, touch the share button.